Hey, what's going on guys? It's Trevor with Embers Fireplaces and Outdoor Living. Today we are doing a fun product comparison. Um, I'm very excited we got in some new grills and this is a new model for the 2020 season, the new Napoleon redesigned Rogue. We wanted to do a side-by-side -side test and a comparison against one of the best-selling grills on the market, uh, the Weber Genesis 310, um, which is a very, very popular grill. When you go into this guy, um, what you're doing is you're getting away from those $199 grills. You're going up a step, one of the higher end grills that you're going to find at a big box store. And we wanted to stack that up against the new Napoleon Rogue and see how the two do side by side, two of the strongest selling brands. And we wanted to just uh, break them down and go over them. So we're going to kind of go through these uh, by branding, cosmetics, aesthetics, performance, and just overall warranty, things like that. So let's start with the branding. Uh, Weber is a very, as you've, if you're watching this video, you probably no doubt know, Weber is a very, very strong brand. They do a great job of taking care of their customers. They have great products and have been doing it for a very, very long time. So the Weber is a great brand, great product, certainly not a bad product to buy. The Napoleon also is the same way. Been around a long time. They've been really up and coming in the barbecue market. Um, done a lot of cool new things that are super popular and super cool. And so I don't think you could really go wrong with buying these just based on brand alone. They're both one of the better quality brands out there in the barbecue industry uh, for this sort of category. Okay, so now let's get into some aesthetics. Right off the bat, um, these are both going to be the more affordable when you do them in the black finish. You can see the Napoleon, they give you much more black though. So we got the powder coated shelving, powder coated top, or the porcelain top, whereas the Weber, we just have the porcelain top here. That's not going to really make a huge difference outside of just saying that these powder, I like the idea of these powder coated tops because the second you set anything on this, uh, stainless top here it's going to be scratched so just a little thing but where we really get into a big difference between these grills is going to be on our pedestals this is the biggest difference aesthetically between these grills so you can see on the napoleon we have a fully enclosed cabinet our propane tank can fit inside nice tight finish i just think it looks a little more polished the Weber series, they sort of have this open cart concept. Now, performance wise, it's really not gonna make much of a difference, but sitting on your deck at home, which one would you rather look at? Personally, I think the pedestal gives us a nice cleaner finish. One thing, there's a couple things I really, really strongly dislike here, and that's gonna be that our grease trap is fully exposed. So most people that sitting in their backyard uh, you probably have a pet. I know if my dog, if I had this sitting in my backyard, he's going to go to town on that grease trap. He's just going to have a field day on it. So, <laughs> whereas being fully enclosed, so it makes a big difference um, having that closed. Also, one thing over here is because it's open, there's nowhere to put your propane tank. So you can see our propane tank is exposed here, and they have these little uh, fenders, and you can see... I don't really, I don't care for them. I mean, why why go through the work to halfway hide your propane tank? You're hiding half of it, and then you got these cheap little pieces out on the front here. So I wish Weber would just put a little more effort into their pedestal base. I just think it gives you a much nicer fit and finish and just overall better aesthetic look. Also, I like the temperature gauge on the Napoleon. It's bigger, beefier, um, easier to read, that sort of thing. So now let's get into the cooking areas themselves here. They're pretty close to the same size. So our Napoleon cooking grates are gonna be 29 by 18. And on our Weber, we're 26 and a half by 18 and three quarters. So fairly close, the Napoleon's just a little bit bigger. But again, Napoleon's gonna give us four burners versus three. So having those four burners more spread out versus more centralized, I think it's just gonna give us um, you know, a little bit more even distribution on our heat, having the four burners versus three. So I do kinda like that feature. Both units are gonna give us cast iron grates. You see the Napoleon, they have their, um, 
their wave pattern to their grates. And the reason they do that is so vegetables and things like that, if you have small things, they're not gonna fall through as much. And then our Weber, full cast iron, straight. Not a big difference there, honestly. I think you're gonna see about the exact same performance between the two on the cooking grates. And again, cooking area, not a huge thing. One thing on the Weber I actually really like a lot is gonna be how this warming shelf is retractable. So if you're like me, majority of the time, you're never hardly messing with a warming shelf. And then the one time you do need it, it's not around. I like that this always stays in the grill. Of course you would need, if it was hot, you need something to lift it up. Whereas the Napoleon just rests in here. So you have to find a place to set this either in your uh, pedestal or something like that for that there. So the overall construction and the way that they're built, you know, I'm not seeing a whole lot of differences there. They both, we'll give you a close up of this, but they both have a, it's called a, they call it like a seamless aluminum tub. So both of these tubs that are in here, um, they're both completely seamless, which is nice because then you don't have a chance of, of grease of grease falling out of the grill or out of this tub. So that I'm kind of seeing about the same too. So really, you know, not a whole lot different there. And then of course, cosmetically you know, with the buttons, things like that, your, your knobs, that's just personal preference and just kind of depends what you like visually. But now let's get into one huge performance differences between the grills that I've noticed uh, when looking at these. So let's take these apart and, and show you something here. Okay, so let's start with the Weber. So we can see here's our three burners here and they're all independent burners. And the way that we're gonna ignite it, we'll show you here. This is one thing I'm not crazy about. So we have to go in here and turn this dial, turn our gas on and then hit it here with the electric. So you can see I needed both hands to do that. That's kind of annoying if you're coming up with a tray of food or something, not a huge deal, but you know, it'd be kind of annoying. You have to use two hands to light this. Now, if you want to light the next burner, you have to do the same thing. You have to go over here and hit it. So we have to control all burners separately here. So all three are completely independent of each other. Now this might not sound like a big deal, but let's say the wind or something comes and, and blows one of those burners out. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, uh, that wind just blew that out. Now your knob's still on, so it's still spewing gas, for there's no way for this burner to be relit unless you are manually lighting it. So you'd have to come over, notice it, and push the button, which you may not notice if it's filled with uh, burgers or something like that. Now let's go over to the Napoleon and show you a big difference here on the ignition system. Okay, so on the Napoleon, you can see we actually have little spark igniters next to each burner. So each burner has its own igniter. So you can see, let me show you that again here. So when I push it in and I spark it, you're gonna get the flame out of the igniter. And then when I let it off, the burner's lit. So you only need one hand to do that. So I'll show you here on the outside, I'll light the second one just using one hand here. So with one hand, you just push it in and twist it. So then all our burners are lit. But here's the really cool thing with Napoleon that we wanna talk about is here you can see these burners are all connected to each other. So they're not completely independent. Okay, so let's say the wind blows out one of our burners here. So you can see it reignites itself. So that's a huge performance difference between these two grills. That one, you only have to use one hand to ignite these and they're on a spark igniter. And then also the fact that they'll relight themselves if for some reason one of them goes out. Also too, you can see we got double, double ports here versus single ports on the Weber. And you'll see that definitely made a difference when we did our test fires. 
the Napoleon got up to temp faster because of that. So just a small little side point there. Okay, and the last thing we want to talk about, we talked about the two brands both being good and high quality products, but we want to talk about warranties a little bit. Weber gives you a 10 year warranty on this guy. And if you really think about it, 10 years, that's pretty good on a grill. Um, Napoleon though, they are gonna go one step further. We're gonna get a 15 year warranty. So we're gonna get five extra years on the Rogue series. So we're getting a better warranty. And I, as you guys know, I usually don't talk pricing too much in my videos because pricing changes all the time. But in early 2020 here, um, the Napoleon comes in cheaper. So it's a little bit more affordable than the Weber. So we're getting a better warranty and more affordable. So that's my breakdown, guys. What's my final conclusion? In my opinion, and I'd like to hear what you guys think in the comments below, the Napoleon is an easy choice. Um, most of the grills, as we most of the parts of the grill, as we talked about, you're sort of splitting hairs on, on some minor details, cosmetics, things like that. But there's really uh, two main major reasons I would choose the Napoleon. The first was the cabinet design. I hate that the Weber doesn't give us an enclosed cabinet for our grease trap and then our exposed propane tank. It just looks, for buying an expensive grill, it just feels cheap to me. Um, whereas the Napoleon gives us a fully enclosed pedestal. Now again, that bothers me, it may not bother you, but um, that's kind of what I think. But the number one reason I would buy the Napoleon over the Weber is the ignition system. I love that we only need one hand to ignite the Napoleon, and I love that all the burners are connected to each other, so if the wind were to blow one out or, or you had one go out for some random reason, it would always reignite itself without gas filling up in your um, grill there. So th those are just my thoughts. Sometimes you guys give me a hard time when I'm splitting hairs on things, but those are just what I, what I noticed in between the two grills. Uh, let me know what you think. If you want to see these products in person, come down to our showroom uh, in Westminster, Colorado. You can check these grills out. You can call or text our staff at 303-800-5659. Check out these products on our website at www.embersliving.com. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, subscribe to our channel today, give this video a thumbs up, and stay tuned for more videos.